Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Chef Gwen. I am the executive chef of Avenues Catering here on campus. Um, it is my first demo, so I'm trying to work around just getting all the information out to you guys and presenting these crepes to you without any hiccups, <laughs> so to speak. Is everyone enjoying their lunch so far? Yeah. Great, great. Um, so what I want to do while I'm unwrapping all of my um, ingredients here is talk a little bit about crepes. Uh, but before I do real quick, I just want to see if by a show of hands, I guess, how many people do, uh, here really love brunch or have time and love to go to brunch? <laughs> so pretty much everybody, right? <laughs> OK. So um, what I want to do with uh, these crepes, and obviously these ingredients are not a staple for all crepes. This is a very subjective. Um, brunch item, so you guys can really play with the ingredients. Uh, but brunch is a very uh, great luxury to have, not only just on weekends, if people have availability in the weekday. It's a nice way to host a brunch in your home with friends that, or maybe even just uh, loved ones uh, that are home and you guys happen to have some time to do it. Brunch is also a nice thing people could do when they're you know, waking up a little late from a long day of work the next the day before. So just consider the, the options for this. A uh, little background as, uh, as well, excuse me, about crepes. Uh, crepes originated in France, uh, really started to flourish in Quebec, uh, Canada. And crepes are also pronounced crepe. Uh, it's actually a Latin, the word is derivative in a uh, Latin word. I cannot pronounce it properly. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of background with this. These are just basically very flat pancakes uh, that can be made savory or sweet. Uh, like I said, subjective to ingredients and flavor profiles based off of who's making it. So this is something that you guys can really wow your friends and family with whenever you do brunch and just say, hey, you know, I was at American University and I was making some crepes because Chef Gwen told me and it's the best thing ever and this is my new skill. So, okay. And obviously I'll have questions um, answered afterwards or during if you guys are really eager to try to find out exactly why or what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, also, uh, your recipes for these particular crepes are at the table that you guys are sitting at. I hope that each one has, uh, everyone has one. Um, if not, I have more than enough copies. I can hand out more for anyone who may have a need for more recipes or anything like that. Um, let me go ahead and turn on my, my stove tops real quick. And so basically what I did with these recipes is I made it very simple and straightforward. My cooking style is that um, I basically don't like to add anything extra to my ingredients. I don't like to mess around too much with my ingredients. Uh, that is pr primarily my cooking style. I think that when you really love food, you want to just showcase what it naturally is as much as possible. Warming up something that has way too many ingredients in it, you're never gonna really taste what you really wanted to buy or eat initially. You're gonna taste a variation of things. So um, with that said, the ingredients, uh, I'm having a little trouble with lighting my burners, sorry. With the ingredients on these, uh, on these crepes, even the crepe batter itself, is just whole wheat flour. Uh, I used soy milk uh, and then there's just a pinch of salt, a little bit of water, because this is a thin cre uh, crepe, but thin pancake, so it's, you really want to thin it out. Uh, that does not take away from the flavor, though. Uh, traditionally, crepes are also made with whole grain flour, but there are also white crepes where people make you know, bleached white flour crepes. But these are actually the traditional way to make them. Uh, then there's, if you have a sweet crepe, you want to do a little bit of vanilla extract or even vanilla beans you can incorporate with your crepe batter. Uh, then there is um, eggs, whole eggs, and that's it. You whip it nice and, and make sure that it's a very smooth batter. It's not lumpy or anything like that, which would make the perfect crepe. Now, if I can try to figure out these uh, burners, I'm sorry. Uh, what I do not have in the recipes, one second. 
What I do not have in the recipes and I included with my ingredients up here is vegan cream cheese. I have for the sweet crepes, uh, Greek yogurt. But for whoever is vegan, you can substitute the eggs in your crepe batter and you can substitute the uh, yogurt to vegan cream cheese and even a little bit of vegan cream cheese in your crepe batter. So that's an option as well. As well as vegan cream cheese, yeah. So it would be dual purpose. Could you get Jose out here? Sorry, I'm gonna try to get this started real quick, but um, actually it's a perfect time to um, ask any questions before I even make a, a crepe real quick. Let me see if I, this one will work. So for an egg, you typically do about each egg on average would be like an ounce and a half. So you would substitute by ounces. So um, in this particular recipe, you're using one egg for one cup of flour, one, one ounce and a half for cream cheese, for vegan cream cheese. And this you can pick up at Whole Foods or Wegmans or any specialty supermarket or market that sells a lot of vegan products. This is, a, this is my particularly favorite vegan product to use when I'm trying to substitute um, any kind of like yogurt or cream cheese or anything like that. There's also vegetable uh, uh, like shortening, but that's more like for cakes when I make cakes or anything that calls for butter instead of um, you know, something vegan option for that. So basically in the ingredients here as well, uh, why does it want to turn on? Sorry. The ingredients here as well, um, what I did with the broccoli was I roasted the broccoli uh, with a little bit of garlic, olive oil, salt, and pepper, um, and that's it. I chopped it up. Um, what we also have on the tables are just a demonstration of what they'll look like and how they would present themselves after we finish all the ingredients. Um, they can be folded a different way and they can be placed a different way. Thanks, Rebecca. I don't know, I think he tested it out earlier. Sorry. <laughs> Give us a moment. <laughs> Jose tried to turn it on earlier. Let me see. Can you bring, bring Jose here over?
there was a leak in the butane uh, little can, so I'm sorry about that, but we're good. We're just gonna work with one right now so that we don't burn ourselves down here. Um, so bear with me, I'm gonna try to do everything in one um, burner, uh, the sweet and the savory. Uh, so basically what I was uh, trying to hint at earlier was that this is a very thin pancake. Uh, th this is a very healthy option. You know, traditional brunch can have a consistency of like scrambled eggs, chicken and waffles, like heavy bacon, all these other options that are just so unhealthy but filling. But we can do these filling um, brunch items and br brunch options without uh, really uh, doing anything too unhealthy. Um, so basically, what you would typically want to do is get a pan spray in lieu of using oil or you know butter or anything like that. Make sure you have a nice nonstick pan. Now for let's try to do for the sweet for the sweet crepe. Now this might be a little too hot. But for the sweet crepe, you're not going to want to put too much batter. I would say about two ounces of batter. And what you want to do is make sure it gets nice and, uh, nice and spread out through the pan. So you make as thin as possible. I mean, you don't want it to be like paper thin so that you can put the ingredients inside and it won't, um, it won't tear on you while you form the crepe. But the first thing you do want to do when you make a crepe is make the actual crepe itself. Um, for this savory crepe, you're going to want to do, uh, you know, a little bit of egg whites, a little bit of, you know, whatever ingredients you prefer. In this case, I'm going to put some onions and roasted broccoli. And then just top it off with a little bit of Parmesan cheese and parsley. Parsley mostly for color and, you know, because it's pretty. <laughs> so... At this point, the bottom of the crepe is already nice and um, seared off and cooked. So I can flip it, um, but to, okay, well, I'll, fl I'll flip it, but traditionally you want to use a little bit of a spatula and then just, you know, flip it over evenly, but there you go. <laughs> you can try to impress the... Practice a little bit, and you can try to impress uh, whoever you're making a crepe store in your, either in your house or wherever. But so basically, you want to cook it on both sides. This is a, about a medium, sh medium, small crepe. But the the thing about it is that I like to make smaller crepes because it's something where you can make smaller portions and do different uh, flavors inside of each one. So you don't have to commit yourself to one big crepe. Um, I know traditionally a lot of people have like the nice huge crepes on the plate, but I don't know. I guess I, I don't like, I'm indecisive when it comes to my food sometimes. It takes me forever to order off a menu at a, at a restaurant. So what I like to do is like basically have little portions of things so I can have a whole bunch of different things. So here is your savory crepe and it's already done. We keep that, res reserve that there because we're going to want to warm up the ingredients. Um, so basically for this, we're going to do egg whites. Um, these are fully pasteurized um, eggs. You know, your preference of eggs is uh, brown eggs, white eggs. It's okay. But for egg whites, I usually wouldn't throw out the yolk because I can use that for another item. But and try to get keep all this stuff going in a flow. See, as though I have only one pan right now. <laughs> So I'm going to just use two eggs, which is more than enough for this little crepe. I typically would probably do one egg, but um, you know, let's, let's keep it as hearty as possible. This is very filling, believe it or not, even if it's a small crepe. Um, the ingredients in this would you know, definitely be healthy and filling all at once for whoever you know, you're serving, even yourself. So once again, pan spray, not too much. Now, what I like to do is sometimes put salt and pepper in my eggs while they were still raw. It's uh, your preference. You could do it while you're doing, uh, cooking in the pan, but basically, 
just a little bit of eggs. I also like to, you know, spread it out in the pan like the crepes because the thinner it is, the more layer it covers when you're, when you're getting your crepes put together. Let it cook off on one side. Also, great uh, thing to have with these uh, crepes while you're doing brunch or whenever you're doing it. Actually, this doesn't have to be a brunch item. You can have this for dinner or lunch, whenever. But um, I would constantly, when I was looking at these recipes and thinking about this demo, I was like, a guava mimosa would be perfect with this. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little. It's a good pairing, guys. Just something to do when you're uh, thinking about putting this menu together. So you just like cook it on both sides, let it do its thing. At this point, you can add a little bit of um, the broccoli you roasted off and the onions to warm it up. Just to make sure it's nice and um, warm all in the same crepe. All right, then you add your egg. I typically do it a little bit to one side so I can roll it up nice and neatly. All the other ingredients right there. Now, you can also add a little bit of Parmesan cheese inside of the crepe if you really are, you know, enthusiastic about the cheese. Uh, nobody's mad at you. Nobody's gonna be mad at you about it. Another kind of cheese to put in if you're really you know, want to wow people, a little bit of goat cheese would be great. So you roll it up nice and neatly. It's like a little, it's like if you did a little omelet, but with a blanket. So <laughs> that's, that's a thing. So a little bit of Parmesan cheese crumbled right there and a little bit of fresh parsley on top of that. And that's, that's your savory crepe. I'm gonna go ahead and use, I'm gonna use my other pan because I did eggs and, um, we're good. I did eggs and uh, savory things in my other pan and I want this to make sure that this is um, a sweet crepe completely. So for your sweet crepe, you're gonna wanna do basically the same thing you did for the savory, just different ingredients. So. Get the pan semi-hot, not smoky hot like earlier, but a little bit hot. Pan spray once again. This is only different because it has um, vanilla extract in it. Once again, you can add vanilla bean instead of vanilla extract. It's a little bit slightly expensive uh, alternative, but does the trick. So, once again, about an ounce and a half of your crepe batter, using a different spatula as well. And you spread it out. Now, mind you, this batter could be just a little bit thinner, and it could spread out on its own. But I also want to control the size, so I spread it out with my spatula. Controlling the heat, you're gonna bring it down to a medium, a little bit less than medium. So you see, once again, this is drying out. That means that the bottom is getting cooked, it's cooked. Once again, I'll flip it for you guys. <laughs> practice, practice at home, practice. So you let this cook off. There's, that's the only cooking part for the, for the sweet crepe. Um, for this, uh, I'll, Use Greek yogurt, a little bit of diced uh, cu uh, cucumber, a little bit of diced kiwi. And then what we're gonna do is take a fresh banana and just slice a little bit of it. A little bit of banana goes a long way. Perfect. 
So for your, for your sweet crepe, what you're going to want to do is build it this way. I'm going to try to make as much space so I can show you all of the options for this. So what I do is I take my knife, get a little bit of like a thin slice of banana, more than enough. I want to start off with the yogurt, just a little bit. Yes, plain Greek yogurt, yes. You can also use vanilla yogurt. I like to do a little bit of honey mixed in my yogurt. Very subjective, whatever flavor profile really interests you. So, And then just a little bit of kiwi. Now, the recipe calls for kiwi slice, but you can do a dice. You could do diced bananas as well. Two nice little tiny slices of banana. You fold it over like a taco, and then you fold it again little neatly, and then my, my crepe bent a little bit, but basically, nice little fold over. Now, what I have here is a little bit of cinnamon, uh, ground cinnamon. What I didn't bring to this table, um, and you guys should definitely do if you really love chocolate, is cocoa powder. Cocoa powder is really great. <laughs> yes, you're like, you should have brought the cocoa powder. Sorry. Do it when you guys do it at home, please. Cocoa powder, um, it's, it's still it's good for you. It's um, cocoa powder, semi-sweet. Uh, you can buy it at any supermarket, any store. Really delicious add-on to this. So just a little bit of sprinkle of um, cinnamon right on top. I have powdered sugar, but I'm not going to put it on. Cocoa powder, though. Cocoa powder, guys. And that's your sweet crepe right there. So these are your two options that I have here with the different ingredients. But like I said, it's very subjective. You guys can use... Uh, strawberries, fresh blackberries, blueberries. You can even switch up the yogurt. You can do tofu cream cheese. You can, you can mix your tofu cream cheese with a little bit of the cocoa powder. Now, these are options that you guys can really play with. I encourage you guys to set up some brunch dates with your friends and tell them, you know what, just bring the, the mimosas and I got the rest. So <laughs> please, if you guys have any questions, you know, basically that's my, my, my whole demo, but please. So if you're going to make a lot of crepes, you have some people over, how would you recommend like, keeping them warm? Now, what I would do is do all the crepes that you are intending to serve ahead of time. Okay. So like what I did here, I did the crepes first, and that's basically what you would want to do. Whenever you're making crepes, crepes hold pretty well, so you're going to want to do it ahead of time. Now what I do to keep them warm is I make sure my oven's at 200, no more nor less, uh, 200 and just have a pan, a hotel pan, a, a aluminum shaper, whatever container that you um, can use for your oven, nothing plastic of course, um, glass uh, pot, uh, pans or whatever, and then make sure that there's a little bit of parchment paper on top of it or even plastic, or I mean, I'm sorry, aluminum foil um, over it so that it doesn't dry out on the top or the edges. But that's basically how you would hold it in your oven. Now for the sweet crepes, you don't have to have them hot. You can keep them cool. So they can be made, and then just make sure you have plastic wrap and you leave it on your countertop ready to go. When, and this could be a great buffet item because you can have the crepes already set on the side, and then all the ingredients, set up your own crepe your, the way you like it for sure. your guests. Sorry. When you were describing keeping them in the oven, did you think like the crepes on the stack them? Yes, you can, you can stack them. Um, what, what will happen is that because, uh, especially the whole grain, there's something in, in the whole grain that it won't really stick to, to each other too much. Um, and it's very easy to peel off of each other. Um, if you want to slightly stack them uh, a little bit offset each one, like fan them out, that's also a good option. Any more questions? Yes? Oh, yes. Please eat the crepes that I made for you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I made like a small tasting portion for everyone to share family style because I know you guys were chowing down on all the good sandwiches and stuff, so. I'm sorry, what was that? Dinner? Yes, yes. I actually, these are, this is a little bit thick. So yes, you would I would recommend it to be a slightly thinner, slightly thinner. Um, this would be thinner if you add a little more soy milk or you can even add more water. Just make sure you take a little bit, 
cook it and taste it, if it has, if it's bland, add a little bit of salt to it. Or whatever flavor you like. You don't have to, if for the savory one, you can add a little bit of like garlic powder or onion powder to it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so any, any more questions? Everyone's good? Please enjoy your crepes. Thank you guys.